Hi, this project's going to be on the TLC 59116 LED driver. I built a breakout board for this IC to use it with the Raspberry Pi, uh, communicate with it via I2C. Uh, here's my breakout board. Um, so the motivation for this is I've had several projects uh, where I want to control LEDs uh, from a Raspberry Pi. Oftentimes I'll just hook the LED up to a GPIO pin on the Pi uh, with the appropriate uh, dropping resistor and then I'll just uh, turn it on and off uh, via the GPIO. Um, what I found is that's not always the most convenient thing. You'd often like to be able to control the brightness of an LED. And controlling the brightness you can do through PWM, which you could do on a Pi, but there are dedicated ICs for doing that and one of those is um, the TLC59116. Uh, the other motivation is I'm building a toy for my daughter. So anyway, let's talk about um, LED drivers. So there's several different options for an LED driver. Um, one of the very popular ones is the PCA9685, which you can use to control um, servos, LEDs, whatever. Uh, the one thing I didn't like about that is it didn't have constant current control, so you've really got to put dropping resistors in your LEDs. A lot of my projects I'd like to be able to just drive an LED directly uh, without having to add an extra dropping resistor. Um, so I, I looked for something that would support that and that's how I came up with this TLC59116. So this chip seems to be pretty versatile. It does 16 channels so we can control uh, the brightness of 16 LEDs. Uh, you could turn an LED on or off. You can set uh, brightness using pulse width modulation in 256 steps. Uh, you can enroll the uh, LEDs into a group or you can use a single um, command to control the brightness of the entire group. So you could kind of like individually fine tune each LED's brightness and then bright or dim the whole lot of them as a group as well. Uh, it's got hardware blink support. Uh, I think it's got fault detection if one of the LEDs becomes unhooked. Uh, so I, I thought I'd try this. I hadn't seen anyone make a breakout board for this so I, I figured I'd look into this chip and do it. Um, turns out this was really, really simple. Um, so here's a schematic. So we'll see here we have the TLC59116 IC. Uh, it's got 16 outputs. I just ran them over here to a header and the other side of the header I tied up to 5 volt. Um, and then you'll hook up, you know, for an individual LED, you'll just hook it across two of these header pins. Um, on the other side we've got four address lines. Uh, I ran the address lines out to a pull down resistor and then a jumper block to pull them up. Um, there's some ground pins. Uh, the reset, you just uh, run it high. VCC, uh, just hooked to 3.3 volts. Um, and then it's got this uh, current setting resistor, this R1 to the REXT pin. And that is used to control the constant current driver for your LED. So if you look at the data sheet, it'll tell you how to calculate the value of that resistor. A 1K resistor amounts to um, about 20 milliamps, I think is what the data sheet said. Um, up here we've got some optional um, pull-up resistors for the I2C bus. I don't think you need those because the Raspberry Pi already has those on its uh, I2C pins. Uh, there's a couple capacitors, um, decoupling capacitors. And then up here I've got a header that I use to connect it to the microcontroller. Um, the header, I broke out the I2C pin, so the SDA, uh, the SCL, uh, ground, uh, 5 volt, and 3.3 volt. It's easy to pull all of those off of a Raspberry Pi um, using just a total of, uh, what is it, 5 pins. I put two headers on that makes it easy for you to daisy chain uh, from one board to the next. Uh, because this board has a selectable address, you could actually hook many of these together and control um, each of them for the Raspberry Pi. So here is the completed board. It's it's really tiny. Uh, it's dominated by the uh, 2x16 header that lets you hook up the LEDs. Um, over here is the pair of headers to hook to a uh, microcontroller and daisy chain. Here's the address select jumper. Um, you can leave it completely un unpopulated for the first address, otherwise uh, for subsequent addresses start putting various uh, shunting blocks on those. Um, the, the uh, pull down, I think I did a pull down resistor. Um, the IC itself, it's a surface mount IC, it's tiny. Um, I had to do that with my hot air gun. Uh, and the uh, constant current control resistor. 
So ultimately my goal with this is to use it with uh, arcade style buttons. So here's a couple arcade buttons. You can get these commonly on eBay. Uh, this one here has no LED in it. It's just a switch. Um, this one here does have an LED in it. Take it apart. Um, there's the LED. It's on kind of a bayonet mount. So if you look at this LED, there is a dropping resistor they installed in there. That's kind of annoying because I did choose an LED controller uh, that doesn't require dropping resistors, so this dropping resistor kind of just gets in the way. Uh, I suppose if I wanted to, I could take all these bayonet LEDs apart and get rid of the resistors. Um, I don't know what I really care to. But anyway, you assemble that in there. Um, you can take these apart to so just squeeze the back in push it out, take the spring out, then if you pop off the top, um, you can get in there and you could install um, lettering if you want to put custom uh, lettering on your button and then it would, uh, the light would show through the lettering and uh, you'd have a nice light up uh, button with a label on it. It all just snaps back together. Oops, that's backwards. Just kind of squeeze it, put it back together like so, line it up. Um, yeah, so that's the button. So to control this, we're going to need a total of uh, one LED channel to run the uh, LED, and then we're going to need a switch channel to read the status of this switch. So to do that, I came up with a slightly augmented design. Uh, here it is. Everything uh, from here up is the same as the schematic I just showed you, but down here we have an MCP23017 uh, I.O. extender. So I've used the MCP23017 in a lot of my other projects. It's a general purpose I.O. expander that works on the I2C bus. Um, you can see it's got the same SDA and SCL lines. We can hook those right up to the SDA and SCL um, for the rest of the bus. Um, it's also got uh, some jumpers to set an address. Um, and what it does is it gives us 16 pins of digital I.O. Now these could be either inputs or outputs. Um, so you could certainly, you could use this thing to control LEDs if you wanted to and you know with the dropping resistors you configure it all as outputs. But what I wanted to do is I wanted a solution that would let me control the brightness of the LEDs using the TLC59116 and also read my inputs using the MCP23017. One of the advantages of the MCP23017 is that it does have uh, built-in uh, pull-ups. So you do not need um, a pull-up resistor on your buttons. You can just wire a button to each one of these. So that means for my arcade buttons, I will run two wires up here to the LED driver to run the LED, and another two wires down here uh, to the I.O. expander to read the input. So here's the board for the expanded version with that has both the LED driver um, and the uh, I.O. expander for input. I've actually already assembled it and installed it in a project so I can't show you the populated one but you can see just the circuit board. Um, the top half is identical to the top half of this one. The bottom half we've just got the I.O. expander, uh, the jumpers for the I.O. expander, and another uh, 2x16 header. Okay it's time to do a little demo. I've got uh, my Raspberry Pi over here in a plastic case. It's hooked up via the I2C bus and power over here to the TLC59116 breakout board. And then there are two um, eight-segment uh, LED displays over here wired up to the breakout uh, with one common going back for, uh, for all the LEDs. So this will give us uh, a total of 16 LEDs that we can light up. So over here in the other window, I'm logged into my Raspberry Pi. So let's uh, take a look at the little driver that I wrote. Uh, it's called tlc59116.py and there's not much code necessary to interface with this so it's 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 about a page worth up here um, so basically you're sending uh, various commands to the LEDs you figure out which LED it is and you write it to a register um, you can control the PWM you can control blinking turn the uh, master oscillator on and off um, set the blink frequency, set the group PWM, uh, stuff like that. So let's uh, actually try it out. I did add, um, with the driver file, there's like a little miniature command line processor so you can do some demo stuff with it. So if we do um, 
Python. We can turn on an LED, turn it off. We can turn it on with a PWM level. So there it should be kind of dim. I can brighten it up. Um, turn the second LED on. And then now let's try to turn on the first one really dim. That's too dim. How about 20? There you should be able to see the first one's very dimly lit compared to the second one. Um, we can do the group PWM stuff. So let's do LEDs six. seven and eight are now enrolled in the group so if we do a p pwm we can find that we dimmed um, all three of those leds at the same time with one operation on the chip let me dim it even dimmer let's bring it back up to 255 uh, we can try the blink feature Blink one, and we can see that it's only blinking the three LEDs that were enrolled in the group. Slow the blink rate down a little. Turn the blink off. Um, and then I've also done this uh, sort of a Cylon uh, moving back and forth uh, light demo. And that's it. So here's the material I'm going to use to make the box. Um, like all acrylic, it comes in a big flat sheet. And we've got the sides, the bottom, pivot over a little bit. We can see the top. And then way down here would be the uh, front and back. So we'll just pop all the pieces out. Okay, so here I have glued the case together. Um, it's only been glued a couple minutes, but the acrylic glue does set up really quick. Um, I've left all of the paper on the outside because you don't want to get glue on the outside and ruin the finish. Uh, but you can kind of see here's the back panel where the speaker's going to mount. Um, here's all the cutouts for the buttons, side panels. Uh, the front panel's got a bunch of holes in it just in case um, we want to mount anything up there. Okay, here's a completed box. Um, all 32 of the buttons are wired up. I'm flipping it over, I haven't put the back cover on yet. Just so we can see the wiring inside. So there's a total of four wires per button. Two for the micro switch, uh, two for the LED. Um, on each of the micro switches and LEDs, I do have one common that's kind of daisy chained. So you can see like this white wire is daisy chained from one to the next and this brown wire. Uh, so that reduces the wiring a little bit, uh, but each one of the, the switches and the LED has to have one wire that's home run all the way back to the controller board. So that would be the uh, yellow and the blue wires. Flipping it around a little bit, um, you can see over here is the Raspberry Pi, it's Pi Zero W, and mounted on it is the amplifier board with wires running over to the speaker. Um, you can't see the controller boards for the uh, buttons and LEDs. They're way down in here and they're covered with wires. There's one on each side. And over here is one of my uh, MIDI uh, hats for the Raspberry Pi. So we could use this as a MIDI controller if we want. Also serves as the place to hook up the power through that DIN jack. So um, there's sort of a little bus of wires that has uh, the two I2C signals as well as power and ground hooks from here to one of the button LED drivers runs over here to the other button LED driver then runs up to the Raspberry Pi and amplifier um, that's about all there is to see okay let's try out the toy when it starts up it's in music mode each button plays a different note That's xylophone, orchestra hit, flute, bagpipes,
and some random drum sounds. So you can play multiple ones at the same time. That's basically music mode, it's just so that uh, the kid can push buttons and have it make sounds. Um, holding down the shift button and one of the other buttons will change the mode. Game mode. So now it's in game mode. It's going to randomly light up various buttons and play a noise. And the goal is to hit the button while it's lit. Uh, it's currently set with a very toddler friendly threshold that moves slow and gives you a lot of grace on hitting the button. Uh, when you hit the button, it'll play a sound. Then there's a spelling mode that I haven't implemented yet. And then finally there's the animal mode. Animal mode. Now each sound is a different animal noise. So we've got uh, anteater. Uh, bear. Cat. Dog. And you can press these multiple times, so many dogs. So this is just going to let the baby generate all kinds of noise. There's also a web uh, UI that I developed so I can control the thing with the web so I can change modes. Back to animals. So that kind of allows me to play with it from my desktop while she's playing with it on the floor. She's got to hit one of them that lights up. There. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.